Hello, before you start watching this video, I just want to say that because of this camera, some of the conversation is gone and from the end of it. So if it doesn't make sense or we just skipped right to a new topic, I do apologize. Don't worry, Stephen. If you're watching right now, don't worry. We the conversation was kept, man. It was kept. Hey, welcome back to the Alright Podcast. Remember, it's not the best podcast, it's not the worst podcast. It's just an Alright podcast. Alright, so my guest today for the 20th episode, this is the 20th episode. Yeah, so um, I could have done much, much more, but I just got an easy way. Um, yeah, Stephen. Hello, Stephen. Hello. Oh, I can't pronounce your second name, Stephen. You can say Norton or you can say Nocton. Depends Nocton. on which side of the Shannon you come from, really. Right, yeah. Yeah. right. Um, so I have Stephen on because Stephen actually saw me at my new live session and uh, done some stand up comedy. Um, recently, only a few weeks ago, yeah. and you gave me a gig uh, in Navan. Yeah, the whole um, Yeah, and I was like really nervous coming up and doing it, but yeah. you all made me feel welcome. Everybody there yeah, made me feel like, welcome. You're really kind inside that as well, you know. So uh, I, I just I went up feeling nervous, and then when I got into the actual um, event itself, I then. Just all that nervousness just went from me, buddy. If you get me, yeah, it just yeah. it just went inside that. And um, so thanks very much for that. It's a friendly room. Yeah, and um, it's Pete Clark's bar in Avon, and it's 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 a great little venue. That it used to be a, a, a music venue, so they used to get Damien Dempsey and Mundy and, and all the, you know all these kind of big Irish mm. names playing there. And uh, the, the guys there, Damien and, and, and Pete Clark's, took it over and they renovated the place. And when I went in, I just think this is this is a great room. Yeah, this yeah. is a night. It's kind of intimate, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. But you can still fit thirty to forty people there, and everybody has a good laugh, and how, which they did the other night. How how do you come about getting a place like that? Do you do do, do you do that every month or is it every now and again? Every now and again, I'd say every quarter. Yeah, know, once once every three months or so we do that mm. because I mean Navan is a it's a, it's a small place in some ways, you know, and comedy is a weird one to get people to go into. Yeah, you know, I um, mean, fill up the whole room. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather fill a small room than uh, yeah. half fill an empty, you yeah. know, kind of a big room. Uh, the the Navin is a like there's an awful lot of people living in Navin, but you know you need to get big names to draw the people in, you know. So we we had uh, Pat McDonald who was uh, Owen McLove from yeah. uh, you know, and that that brought an awful lot of people in. But what people don't know is the the Irish comedy scene is huge mm. in terms of there's an awful lot of people trying to comedy yeah. uh, for lots of different reasons their own reasons but I think one of the big ones is is that it's a chance to perform with your own material without having to put on a play without having to kind of get involved in all that you know in relation to films yeah. what it takes to put a film together yeah, you yeah. know it's not a one person gig it's no. a, you know yeah. it's, it's an army of people that you need to put on so I think stand-up comedy is kind of accessible for a lot of people that have this desire to perform in some way and it, and it gets them out there really quickly. It's kind of like the, from having an idea to perform to getting on the stage yeah. can be quite quick. I mean, you essentially just need the balls to do it. Yeah, basically. When I, when I um, told people that I was in stand up, literally they were saying, oh, fair play, Joe, I wouldn't be able to go up there. You need yeah. to have some balls to go up there now and yeah. do stand up. But to me, and I'd say to the likes of yourself as well, it's like, it, you don't think of it like that way, do you? Because you're, you're no, I'm very confident. Because yeah, you're all very confident when you're on stage. Yeah, well, this, this is the thing. Like, well, you see, I, I, I would always tell people that remember why they call them con artists because they're confidence artists. It's right. a con. Yeah. Confidence is a con. Yeah. Completely. Right. We act confident. Mm. Are we confident? You said you were nervous before. Yeah. So was I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm nervous all the you know before anything. I'm always nervous. Before this, I'm nervous. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I didn't and, think. I didn't think you. I thought you were just coming straight away and you just do what you need but, to do. But, but what I, I, you know, 78% of people, their number one fear, 78% number one fear is public speaking. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, that's before spiders, sharks, snakes, the dark, heights, Jeez. public speaking. What, what is it about like talking in front of other people like that would, like, that they're scared of? Like, what, what is it about? It's, it's, we all want validation and we all, we all want validation in some way. But we don't want to be judged, which yeah. is a which is a tough balance because I want I want to do something so that you like me and that you'll validate yeah. my existence. Yeah. But if I put myself out, mm. you could hammer me and you could 
you could put me down. And I, I do think in, uh, I, I talked about it recently online, which I don't do, I do a lot of, but you know, I, I, I put up an ad for, for my coaching services that I have. And this random, never met him, fella from Tipperary, God bless him, uh, just put up another spoofer uh, or another bluffer or something like that, yeah. you know, what the world needs, you know. And he literally said, could you not be a doctor or a nurse or something useful? And I was like, what? Like, why the venom? Yeah. What, you know, and, and it's interesting with, with everything that's happened uh, this weekend with Carolyn Flack. Like, people uh, have, have forgotten that, you know what I mean, that there's humans behind every interaction on the internet. And, yeah. and, and unfortunately, people take it in. So that's what people are afraid of when they get up and talk, is they're afraid that somebody will put them down. Yeah. Now, I don't think in person people do, because I don't think oh, half these keyboard warriors are brave enough to say no, anything in person, no. right? Um, so in person people won't do that. They mm. won't actually put anybody down. But our fear is there. Mm. Because we, we, our, our body is communicating to us when we get on stage. It's kind of going, what are you doing? This feels like a threat. Yeah. And remember that we're very primitive still. Like it's, you know, we're only out of the, out of the caves a few thousand years. Yeah. And it still thinks, like even though it's just a microphone in front of you, it, it, it might as well be a bear. Mm. And that's what's happening. So we have that fear of, of a threat. And our brain can't figure out what that threat is. Because, you know, the primitive man and woman didn't have to worry about public speaking because they knew everybody in the tribe yeah. you know, really well. Since yeah. they were a baby, they knew everybody in their maximum 150 person village. Mm. Like everybody, you know, they say it takes yeah. a village to raise a kid. Everybody raised the kid because there was only 150 people in the place. You knew everybody by name. You knew everybody you could sit down. Everybody did sit down together. That's another thing. Yeah. There was storytelling. You know what I mean? All of these things happened. And the storyteller was revered as somebody who you'd listen to. And in a way, stand up comedy is a bit like that. But what happened now is that the crowd has gotten bigger and bigger and it's yeah. become a, a grizzly bear that we're afraid of. Mm. And look, is there anything to be afraid of? I always play the worst case scenario. What is the worst thing that could happen? Now, I guarantee you, the worst thing that could happen anytime you're doing a stand-up comedy is there's no audience. Yeah. That's even worse than the audience not laughing. Yeah. <laughs> no audience, that's, that's no true, audience yeah. guarantees no laugh. Yeah, <laughs> that's very true. That's very true. Um, for the likes of um, the stand-up comedy and stuff like that as well, how did you get started? Like, how, how yeah. long uh, ago did you decide, oh, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this? The, the, it's a weird, it's, you know, I often think of this, and like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not into the scene as much as some people would be, but I remember going, uh, I remember when I was a kid, you know, maybe six or seven, and I remember going uh, to my friend's house, and I remember making them laugh in the car mm. as I was driving to my friend's house, and they were kind of saying, oh, that's so funny. I remember just making people laugh even at that age, kind of, it gave you a kick, it was the validation, you know, it gave you a reason, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. reason to be. Yeah. And I suppose, so fr from that I was never, after that, I was never too afraid of performing in, in some way, and so I would have done everything from plays to pantos. Uh, I was in a band for a while when I was kind of in my late twenties. Uh, a few of us kind of realised that we enjoyed playing music together, and next time, you know, playing music. Uh, how I learned to play music was in a in a folk group in a church, you know, yeah. and yeah, like you know, and it's putting yourself out there doing things. You know, what I mean, I wouldn't be able to. Uh, play guitar if it wasn't for that folk group, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. it gave me a reason to play guitar. Yeah. Um, then I, I studied radio in, in college, that's actually what I studied, um, because I, I, I'd seen uh, Robin Williams on Good Morning Vietnam yeah. and I just thought that looks cool, like, yeah. I, I want to do that. Yeah. Well, really local was radio was not like that. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, I was, I was very lucky, I did get to work in radio for about a year, but then I, I gave it up, I kind of, I, I went on and the big city lights kind of yeah. drew me into Dublin and uh, that, I started working in banks and things like that. But I still always liked the performing bit of it. So as I say, I got, I got into the band, that was a bit of a kick. We played wheelings, we played support for the saw it was all good crack. And, uh, and then, uh, I, I suppose it was two years ago, maybe three years ago now, um, I'd seen that there was a stand-up comedy workshop by a guy I used to know in college. Mm. I went to college with his brother, and they used to be in one of the only comedy clubs in Dublin back 20 years ago. And he was running a stand-up comedy workshop. And at that stage, I was just setting up my own business. And in the business world, in the banking world, I was known as quite a good presenter. You know, yeah. I'd be able to get on that. But when I was out on my own as a businessman, I wanted to see how can I push myself to really be better at presenting. 
And I thought, what's the hardest type of presenting in the world? Comedy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because the feedback is immediate. Yeah. It's bet da 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 no laugh or laugh. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And it's as simple as that. So I kind of said I'd do that. So I did the workshop and uh, met some lovely people in the workshop. Uh, a good few of them are still on the, the stand up comedy scene as well, uh, doing brilliantly at it actually. And um, so I, I think I got in with a good bunch for a start. Um, they, were, they were a very nice bunch of people. And uh, we did a few, we did, we did our showcase gig. The next thing, one or two of them did another gig the week later. I'm like, geez, do you, you just go out and do another gig? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So did a gig. I think the, the first gig was in Jester's in town on the Keys there. Went well, it was enjoyable. Okay, we'll do another few of these. The Haypenny Bridge in. Uh, you know, down at uh, the, the I was on show. Uh, next thing I did gigs in Mullingar and gigs in Limerick. And before, you know, that first year I was doing it, I was doing gigs kind of every couple of weeks. And some people were doing gigs every couple of nights. Yeah, uh, I just not know. I'm not that. I'm not that long. Kind of too much, isn't it? Well, I, I don't. It's, it's not too much if if you have the time. It was too yeah. much for me because yeah. I, I I live out of need and I have to. Uh, have children that need to uh, kind of see their dad at some stage, yeah. <laughs> um, or at least I, I like them, you know, I've gotten used to them, so I want to see them. Yeah. Um, so, so what I tried to do, I, I tried to keep my hand in to, to stand-up comedy, because I do enjoy it, and I like a lot of the people who are on the scene, and it's, I do get that kick out of, out of seeing people laugh. Mm. And so, with David Gilner, another great guy in stand-up, um, who's a, he's a, he's a, a, a playwright as well, he's a, heading off in a on an American tour now, and um, he 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 got me over to Swords to do lightning comedy, and I, I seen what he was doing, and I thought it was very professional. You know, he had set this up as a brand, lightning comedy, and you know he, he was he was trying to, to expand it. And I said, look, you know, actually I'll be your your man on the ground for now, because I didn't really want a comedy brand of my own. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't mind doing the work, but I didn't want to be uh, that. And, and so we collaborated. And it's been brilliant. So for the last kind of year and a half, we've been doing a few shows in Navin, and they've been uh, brilliant. You know, great mm. uh, people in, always different people. We see uh, different comedians coming all the time, and it's been it's been great for me. So that's I mean that's that's my stand up comedy journey. But yeah. It's always about the crack. It's always about having a bit of yeah. fun. Life's too short not to try things. Like the likes of what you were just explaining there is that it, it sounds like you did try a lot of things, a lot of different yeah. things. And for people that are watching now, or probably if you're in college or so, or you're, you're wondering what you want to do. Oh my God. You're going to go through so many stuff. I went in, I've done college about three times. Yeah. I've done film and television, I've done um, web design and visual media. Yeah. I, just, I thought I wanted to do it, but I didn't. I, didn't, I turned out I didn't yeah. want to do it. With film and television, there's certain rules that you have to follow that. For me, I don't want to go by them rules. I want to go and yeah. be like, kind of, what's it, freelance? Yeah, like, guerrilla you know, filmmaker. Yeah, yeah. You know, just go out and do whatever I want, like, you know? Yeah. Um, like that, but that's why I like doing podcasts like this, getting people like yourself out here. Yeah. You're sitting in a room with someone and you're, you're talking to them about the interests that they have. And when someone's interested in something, they're going to, like, they're, they, they can constantly talk about it without. And um, like, um, or not, not we'll talk about it. I, I, I think, if you, I think, if you get, absolutely. You get, like, I, I do a little bit of work with third level institutions, and I've spent a bit of time with students. And there's a lot of pressure on people. First of all, with the leave and search. I personally think it's a ridiculous little game that we've all agreed to play for some mm -hmm. reason. And um, with a lot of pressure on people to kind of choose your future. Mm -hmm. It's like some sort of weird kind of Lord of the Rings thing. <laughs> choose your path. <laughs> okay. Well, actually, guess what? It doesn't matter. You can, you can change. Yeah. And especially in your 20s. Yeah. In your 20s, try whatever you want. Try loads of different things. Mm. Because it's only through trying things that we actually figure out what we like. Mm. The information we get from finding out we don't like something is as important as the information we get from, some, from finding out we do like something. They are both parts of the same information stream. You can't, you know, oh God, I tried this and then I, I, I didn't like it, so I just stopped doing everything. Yeah. Like, that's the worst. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And that's the have people have that mindset as well. I had that mindset when I was like about 18 or so yeah. like that as well. Do you know, oh, I'm not very good at this, I'm probably not going to go at anything in that field as well, and so I'll just quit doing that yeah. altogether, you know? That's it, yeah. And, and like the pressure, the pressure to kind of say, well, this is your career for the rest. 
I mean, that, that day is gone where there's a job for life and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, there's negatives to that because, you know what I mean, things aren't as secure as they were. But there's massive positives, which means you can change your career. The studies would show that uh, people have 11 different jobs in their life. Now, nobody says they have to be 11 different jobs in the same industry or doing the same role. So you can chop and change. I mean, I've done radio broadcasting. I've worked full time as an event organizer for a charity. I've worked in banking. In, in banking, I've had bank official working in an operations role. I've looked after operational risk. I've looked after performance management. Uh, I've been a coach. And now I, I teach leadership, and uh, that's what I do. You know what I mean? So I've had plenty of different roles. And I don't feel like I. I don't feel like any of them are off my path. Yeah. They actually all made my path what it yeah, is. So what? What it is? Yeah, now, yeah. You have to try things. And and the nature of fail. People don't want to fail as well. Mm. Why? You know. What, A lot of people yeah. are afraid of fail. Yeah, but what's the consequence of fail? What's the worst thing that can happen? I always ask this question of people that I talk. They what's probably, the worst? Probably. Probably. The worst thing probably about failing is that they, they feel like they set themselves out to do a goal probably and they put all their energy into it maybe. Yeah. And it just came back to bite them in the arse. Like that's what that's what And how is. sharp is the bite versus everything they learned along the way? Mm. Like yeah, failure has a sharp little bite. I, when I worked for that charity, I organized this, it was supposed to be a three location event, right? It was going to be this massive thing, one in Galway, one in Cork, one in Dublin. Massive event. Massive failure. Yeah. I mean, like I think of it now, I go, geez, yeah, I really didn't get that together. At the time, were you proud of it though? I was devastated at the time. Yeah. But when I look back now, there were so many lessons I learned. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And even, even following on from that, it probably took me a long time to pick myself up after it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there, there was a lot of things in that that I kind of, you know, you need your support network. You need to make, you know, don't, don't make decisions if you're not sure that, you know, there's a certain amount of trust your gut. There's, there's things now that I kind of go, geez, that, that taught me all of that. Mm -hmm. And even, but that whole experience, that was, that was one failure in a whole year yeah. of successes. Mm -hmm. And yet that's the one I remember. You know what I mean? So one failure, loads of success. Right. But I, I, I think about the fit. But it's only failure if I don't learn the lessons from. Mm -hmm. So what's the worst that can happen? I always get a thing, what's the worst that can happen? I can talk about it now, so that's brilliant. So that's yeah. failure brilliant. And for people I, that listen, they yeah. can learn from it. Exactly, and like, you know, fa you know tr trying things, like, you know, so playing in a band, uh, trying radio, trying stand-up comedy, trying all these kind of things. So what the fail? Or I, I don't plan on being, you know, kind of Michael McIntyre and yeah, have my yeah, own yeah. show. So, I don't know. Yeah. What does success mean to me in stand-up comedy? I get to meet nice people, I get to make people laugh, that's cool. Mm. You know, it, it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be as big as uh, you know what I mean. Kind of like, well, if, if I'm not playing at uh, you know the, the Edinburgh, or if I'm not playing that, well, I I, I failed. That's, failed. Yeah. That's not failure. No. Are you having fun? Mm. Are you learning? Mm. Are you growing without getting too? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know, are you doing all those things we're doing? If you're doing that, you're an absolute success. Yeah. I used to think when I was younger that I would watch stand up comedians growing up. Yeah. And I would think, man, I'm going to do that one day. And at 18 years of age, I went to the Hayley Bridge and I'd done impressions yeah. of the Mike Tyson, Chris O'Walken, and I'd done all these geek characters and stuff. And people liked it, but then I went one night where I didn't. Yeah. It didn't go well, and I quit. I stopped when I was 18. And when you're 18, you kind of... Oh, yeah. yeah. There's so much stuff that's went through your head. Probably had a few friends there that night as well. Friends as well yeah. there that night, you know, watching it, and you can just see it. Just coming over, you go, shit, yeah. I failed. Get me, um, but then when I decided to go, fuck it, I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna do it. And I think when I came in and done it, the crowd that I was with, so like yourself and Ali inside that yeah. as well, and John, and um, I think the, I think support is a very big thing for when you want when you want to do something, especially when you're trying something new. Yeah. When you have to support your friends or people around or even strangers, you know. Uh, as I said at the start of the podcast, and um, as well, kind and stuff like that as well, you know. Um, yeah. But for people that are out there now and they want to pursue a career in like radio or television, or they just want to start their own podcast, what advice would you give them? Well, if it's a podcast, yeah. 
get a mic, plug it in, start talking. Yeah. That's that's the first thing. Yeah. Honestly, uh, like you know, I, I have a podcast. It's it's you know going for the last year and a half or so as well. Mm. It's very business oriented. It's about leadership and that kind of thing. But you know, whether I have five hundred listeners or nine hundred listeners, depending on the episode, you know what I mean. It, it can you know buck between that. Yeah. To me, it's the people I get to meet when I do the podcast. Mm. It's, it's amazing. I, I get to interact with and have great conversations mm. with great humans. Mm. And I just find that a total privilege. Mm. So whether I do the podcast for another year or another 10 years, as long as it's still giving me something, I'm, I'm really happy. Mm. Now, if it's, if it's giving other people something that they listen, and I've always said to, you know, about the podcast as well, if we tried to organize it, if we rented my local parish hall yeah. at Mead and said, right, we're going to put on a talk, myself and Anthony, and we're going to put on a talk now, and we're going to try and get a uh, hundred people in the room. Mm. That would be exceptional if we were able to get a hundred people in the room. Mm. But by using technology that we have now to become our own kind of broadcasters, we can get a hundred people watching this. Oh yeah, yeah. We can get a hundred people listening to us. And it's no effort on their part, and it's no effort on our part, really, other than the will to do it. Yeah. Because, you know, you've got the skills, I've got the skills. Uh, I, I was sitting with another podcaster last Friday, and, and I was showing them a few tips in, t- in terms of sound and things like that, because, you know, I obviously did it in college, but yeah. I was doing radio. I said, oh, try this, try that, and it gives you, you know, richer sound. And they were like, oh, that's brilliant. Because you're interacting with people who will help each other as well. Yeah, the same as well. well. It's very, it's very uh, so you get a buzz out of it. I started um, a YouTube channel four years ago. And it took me four years to reach a thousand and sixty subscribers. Wow. Right? So that's yeah. good. But as you said, a thousand people though. That's a thousand that's amazing. people. And then I hope a thousand people come to my funeral for God's yeah. sake. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Not soon. Yeah, no. Wait, yeah. way down the road. Yeah. Yeah. None of you need to organise that. <laughs> But well, as you said about the numbers, they can go up or they can go down, you know? Um, I think uh, as well, if you're doing the likes of a podcast or so, you need to be very consistent with it. Yeah. You need to have a time schedule. If you're gonna put mine is put out Wednesday, 6 p.m. Yeah. Get me Monday in here. Get me, you need yeah, to have that structure. You're giving yourself a tough job. Yeah. Yeah. So you have, you have yeah, to have yeah, yeah. yeah. would, you, would you edit your own podcasts? I do, yeah. 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 I, now mine's audio only, so I don't have the video yeah. out of it. Um, and, it, it's a long form conversation like this as well, so uh, there's not much editing to be done, mm-hmm. really. Um, you know, as long as you have that structure of where you want the conversation to go. I love the tangents. I mean, I love when it goes off in, in different tangents. I've, I've had to do very little editing, but you know, sometimes you do. Um, there, there'd be times people come in and say, oh, sorry, yeah, and they yeah, you know, forget to knock on the door or whatever it might be, because you know, you don't have a, a red light outside yeah, saying, yeah. we're recording it. But um, I, yeah, you know, Probably for every episode, you, you have the time that you spend getting to it, uh, recording it, uh, getting back, and you'll spend another couple of hours, good couple of hours, maybe even more, with the editing and the promotion, you know, putting it on the yeah. various platforms, making sure it's formatted correctly because there's rules on iTunes, rules on, on Spotify, and rules on all these things. So, you know, there's a little bit of education that you need to do, but there's nothing insurmountable, there's nothing that people. You know, the great, I have to say, there's so many resources out there yeah. for you to ask questions and get answers back. Mm. You know what I mean? There's yeah. so many the links links Instagram, to Instagram, I always do. Um, I say on a Friday, if I know I'm getting a guest on, I'll pop up um, a question to ask them or something. No, I didn't do it this week because yeah. I forgot. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I do that as well. And then to promote your videos, I always do a small little video on put up on the Monday, a small yes. little video for Tuesday. And it, like back in the day, um, I wasn't born back then, but I'd imagine um, that there was only a few certain channels. And there's only a few certain um, yeah, TV channels you can yeah. watch. And now there's just a much bigger range that people can go out and do this, all this themselves. Quite a radio. I remember when I was a kid, so, so there, was, there was 2FM, there was your local radio station, mm. and it was RT. Mm. That was it. There wasn't even uh, Radio Miguel. <laughs> there was yeah, yeah. nothing. And uh, out in Port Marnock, there used to be at the Sands Hotel, there was a pirate radio station called Sunshine. Yeah. Sunshine. And then out in Trim in County Mead, there was another uh, radio station called Atlantic 252. Mm. 
And I was really lucky. I, I, you know, it's, as I say, everything feeds your journey. I'm only thinking of this now. Yeah. I was in these radio studios when I was 10 because we, I remember, you know, we used to go, we had, uh, my dad's cousins were in Port Marnock. We used to go for walks down there and we were down to the, and we seen, seen the little stickers mm-hmm. in, the, in, the, in the chalet for Sunshine Radio, Pirate Radio. And, uh, you know, my mum, kind of one of these people, she goes, sure, knock it, we'll go in and have a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, can we have a look inside? Yeah, okay. And in the radio studio and got stickers with sunshine on it. And, but, you know, when you're a kid and somebody yeah. gives you a sticker, it's the best thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's the best present at Christmas. Like, it's probably the equivalent of a kid getting a phone now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then going to Trim, and it was this big old kind of Georgian house, mm-hmm. and Atlantic 252, mm-hmm. you know, it was, had, had their studios. And again, just kind of like, can we come in and have a look? Yeah. And they're only too delighted. When I think now, it's, it's no imposition for these people. It's kind of like people who want, who are interested in what you do. Yeah, yeah please come in and have a look. It's, yeah, it's yeah, flattering, yeah. you know? So I remember when they were my brothers and kind of again, stickers, yay, <laughs> go home with the yeah. stickers and put it in the car, Atlantic 252, and you, and you see these things, you know what I mean? So there were so few channels mm. for you to, to get out there. Now, now it's a double-edged sword. Mm. Now there's loads of channels for everybody to get out there. Yeah. Not every village idiot deserves a voice. Yeah, 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 true, true. So there is that as well. Mm. And, but there are so many ways for people, whether you do short clips on Instagram or Facebook, whether you do long form. I really like long form. Yeah. I think people's, people have lost their attention span. And I think if we can bring them back into paying a bit more attention, it's good. Yeah. Um, because, you know, they, they want, I know there's TikTok and it's, Quick move, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. talk about 10, 10, 15 Really seconds. killing kids' attention span, yeah. you know what I mean? Flick, 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 yeah. flick, flick, never ending flicking. Do you know what I mean? Jeez. I always, I always uh, when I wake up in the morning, first thing I got do, like Nick will be there on the weekends with me. Yeah. And the first thing I do is, I should be getting up, giving her a kiss, saying, yeah. how's it going? Yeah. No, the first thing I do is reach for my phone yeah. and look through her Facebook, Instagram, and I have a bad habit. And she's yeah. looking at me in the face and she's like, what are you doing? Give me a kiss. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I've been looking through it, and today, literally, today, uh, this morning, it literally clicked in my head, and I was like, oh my god, I spent like half an hour just looking at people's videos, and they were, some videos are really, really stupid. Yes. I don't know why I find myself sitting in bed, and it's, it's, it's because, yeah, like, I mean, they're, they're very, I have to say that, like, the, the, what people forget is there's a huge amount of science gone into this. Where they're, where they're looking, they're analysing what keeps people there. Mm. So what I noticed last year, there was a trend of, uh, which they haven't done before, but it, it started last year in videos uh, in general on Facebook. Uh, um, was what they would do is they would show you the end of people going, "Oh my God, wow!" You know, yeah. and then they go, "He couldn't believe this happened," and then they go back to the start. Oh, yeah. So it brings you from there to so you know that there's something mm. here mm. that you want to see, and you want to see how the hell did they get to there? Yeah. And uh, I only out of pure curiosity because normally I wouldn't watch that. I, I, I do watch things like Fail Army. Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh my god, you gotta get on this. Yeah. It's, it's unfortunately people falling over and hurting themselves. Right, stuff yeah, like that. yeah, Nicola laughs at that. Very cool. yeah. it, it is like you've been framed on Facebook. Mm. And so, you know, for that reason, that, you know, I kind of think it's funny. But in general, the, you know, out of curiosity, I looked at some of these videos and they go on for like three minutes yeah. and to get to the drama piece. But then there's, there's two ads or whatever. And, you know, so that, like, this isn't somebody sitting at home putting together this video saying, oh, well, this is a good way of doing it. Like, these are serious media companies going, how do I get somebody to watch my two ads? Yeah. The video is not important to these companies. No. The ads are. Mm. And can they keep you for two ads? Yeah, exactly. Or one ad, or yeah. whatever it might be. Yeah. And the ad, you know, can like, and next thing you'll watch, you'll watch, you'll watch, nothing's happening. And next thing you know, oh, I'm nearly at the end, I'll watch on. Ad comes up, well, I better watch on. Yeah. And look, the reason people advertise is because it works. Yeah, fact. that's true. So, you know, we have to educate ourselves as consumers as to what's going on and how they are. I don't like calling them manipulating, they're just doing their job. Mm. You know what I mean? They are just doing their job. It's not manipulation, but how they're using your brain uh, to, you know, to capture your attention. They're using, you know, natural instincts. Mm. You know what I mean? Kind of, if, if, if you've seen, if, if somebody walked by in a room here, with a small elephant, you go, what then? Yeah. And you'd go and you'd have a look yeah. and you'd get out of here immediately yeah, and you'd yeah, be gone yeah, looking yeah. for the small elephant. They show you the small elephant and go, follow me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, I mean, it's very clever what they do. I think people are very down on social media and all that kind of stuff at the moment. But that's like been, that's like 
taking cocaine and being down on drug dealers. I'm sorry, you do have a choice yeah. of what cocaine, you know what I mean? You, you, sorry, what cocaine, which, which brand? <laughs> no, I mean, you have a choice whether to take that cocaine yeah. or not. And you know, you can't, don't blame drug dealers. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? A lot of people excuse, you, you know what I'm saying, users have no, oh, well, you know, it's not the user's fault. It's, sorry. It is. <laughs> the they user has a big part in personal that. responsibility yeah. is, a, is, is everything. Mm. So, you know, who do you follow on Twitter? If somebody puts out vile hatred, mm. stop following them. Yeah. Stop it's following easy. them. Yeah, easy. Just a click of a button. It's, it's not like, a book. why are you following them? Peter, you're you're following them to be outraged. Just some what people they say. love that. People get a kick off that. But they want to be outraged. They want to, because remember, we're, we're stimulus junkies. Mm. And we live in a world now where we're robbed of stimulus. Mm. We're actually robbed because we've, we've attached ourselves to these devices mm. and we've robbed ourselves of external... We've forgotten about the stimulus outside and around us. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Think of how much stimulus there possibly is around us that we just don't do. Like, I'd encourage everybody, this might sound mad, just go and touch grass for a while. Yeah. Just feel that grass yeah. for a while. That's amazing stuff. Mm. Like, I, this morning I, I, I was taking a hedge out of it and I'm chopping wood and, and kind of like doing, doing kind of stuff that made me feel physically tired. Brilliant. I, I love doing that, you know what I mean? You kind of, you, you're getting in, you know, touching stuff and there's, yeah. the, you know, there's thorns hitting you and there's, you cut yourself just yeah. under your eye as it did. All, all these things, but it's, that's actually alive. Mm. You know, nothing on the device in front of you will make you feel alive. Yeah. But why we go to the outrage, why we, you know, we go, oh, what's this about? What's this about? The clickbait mm. is because we're looking for that sim stimulus. We're mm. looking for the same kick yeah. that all these other things that are available to us all of the time are. Like, look, if we shake hands, there you go, look, yeah. there's a warm human hand. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Isn't that mad? Yeah. Like it's there, everywhere, we, everywhere we go. Yeah. I just think it's, you know, and by the way, I'm, I'm no saint, you know, I'm not like one of these people like, I don't use my phone after seven yeah. o'clock at night and I don't, like, I recently went back on Twitter. Mm. The reason I had, I'd been on it before and I came off it because I found it a vile cesspit of humanity. Mm. And it was the worst thing. Everybody does on Twitter just to unleash that problem. Oh, it's shocking. The, the first, you'll get, you'll get a post sometimes innocuous, sometimes not, you know, and next thing, first comment will be relevant, second comment will be relevant, another 50 comments bitching at each other, Yeah. bitching yeah. at the people who are making comments, that, that's weird, Yeah. That that's like the bus driver not turning up and the passengers attacking each other, Yeah. which is what? It what? Just, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So, you know, we have, to, we have to take personal responsibility for what we engage in, there was something came up on Twitter the other day, and I went, I myself went, no, 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 let that thought pass you on there. Yeah. The world doesn't need to know what my thought is on. Yeah. The world doesn't care what my thought is on. And everybody, everybody thinks, thinks you have to say. Everybody, everybody has to say. No one really gives a shit. Uh, we we got to be really careful what we put out there. You know, I posted a few weeks ago about there is only energy. It's not negative or positive. It's just energy. It's it's like a bucket of energy. And we get to decide whether we go positive or negative. We get to decide whether it goes out in a negative or a positive way. But it's just energy. Mm. And so if I, if I go, oh, Twitter. Oh, no, hang on. Yeah. No, I'm not going to put negative energy out there. We actually get to decide that. So people blame and, you know, at the moment, you know, there's a lot of people going, be kind and all this kind of stuff. Sorry, just everybody needs to, That's you know, personal responsibility. Personal responsibility. For the likes of that, right, I understand that the, well, Caroline Fleck job, is that Fleck? Caroline Fleck uh, uh, passed away at the weekend, yeah. uh, last weekend, and um, by uh, every report it seems that she took her own life, which mm. is an awful tragedy. Mm. And a lot of people have said that it's because of the abuse that she would have received online and in the papers, mm. because she was involved in a court case of domestic abuse where she was the uh, alleged perpetrator. And, she, she lost an awful lot in her life, you know, whether it be um, as a presenter, uh, you know, on Love Island uh, and, and these kind of things, which, look, in my opinion of those shows, is very low as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't have a good opinion of a show that exploits people's desires to, to make it big or anything like that, you know what I mean? And, and essentially promotes maybe not the best values, I would say. Yeah, yeah. The people are putting up. It's like when someone dies, man, when a celebrity dies, everybody, everybody suddenly cares about them. Yeah. But everybody, everybody was giving her so much shit. Yeah. And a, a lot of people on my Facebook yeah. feed were giving, them so, giving her so much shit. Yeah. And at the minute, 
Yeah. She died. The amount of people I've seen on my yeah. Facebook that I remember specifically what they said about that woman or what about the incident. They're like, oh, be kind, that change and that thing to be kind because she had a cross on the And I was like, yeah. oh, like, it yeah. just gets, but there's, there's you, there's your example there. I have a choice now to sit there with a bucket of energy and go, right, will I go in and put something out on the post, negative, or will I just not interact with it? So that's a perfect example there. And I decided to say no. Yeah, just, just that, like, pe people obviously are, you know, there's a certain amount of pe people feel really sorry for her and they, they you know, they, have, they do have a lot of sympathy for her and they want to express that and that's fair enough. Yeah. And then there's a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon. Yeah. Things, like, and, yeah. You know, that's, that's another, another side of it. Um, the whole mental health thing at the moment is, is very focal, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It, it, there's a lot of attention on it. And, I'm going to say something that's probably going to make me very unpopular, right? but you know, I coach people all the time, I deal with teams all the time, I deal with you know, people in the workplace all the time, and what's focal is important. What you put your energy into mm. is what will be the most important thing in the world. So there's a lot of people saying, it's okay not to be okay. That's a perfect line. It mm. is absolutely okay. I would, I would say, rather than it being okay not to be okay, it's bloody human. Yeah. To not be okay sometimes. Yeah. We have a spiral of emotions. It goes from here where we're totally elated and joyful and here where we're totally depressed. Yeah. The problem only ever comes if we stay here or stay here. Mm. Social media implies that people are here all the time. Yeah. Look at me, living my best life. Yeah. So this is what we're fed. And if we feel here, relative to that, it feels weird. It feels, yeah. oh, I must be terrible then. I must be in a bad place because I'm not here. Yeah. Fine. But sometimes we do have to go down here. Mm. You know, if, if you're moving house, if there's a death in your family, if somebody you know has a serious illness, if you're changing jobs or you're dealing with a different situation in work, you will be down here. Mm. That's normal. If you're not feeling that down here, you're a sociopath. Yeah. You actually do need to feel this emotion as well because it's, it's telling you something. Mm. Like anger is a good emotion. Yeah. Every emotion is a good emotion because it's serving us in some way. Like Rosa Parks, the, the lady who sat in the bus yeah. in, uh, in Alabama, do you think she could do that if she wasn't some way frustrated and angry? Mm. Of course, she had to be frustrated because she needed to She needed to go through her fear of being arrested and get the courage. Yeah. That takes a little bit of, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you need anger. You, you also need to feel sad because it lets us know what's important. Mm. Sometimes when we lose something and it makes us feel sad, it lets us know that was important to us. So the next time I have something like that, maybe I'll be more careful with it or not, you know, mm. uh, you know, depending on what it is. Yeah. One of the issues I have at the moment, it's okay not to be okay, or rather it's human not to be okay because it's part of the emotions we're supposed to feel. What I think is not okay, and this is the unpopular bit, is talking about it all the time. Mm. Because I don't think it does anybody any favours, mm. especially celebrities, mm. people who have made themselves, who wanted to be, and have made themselves role models, whether they like it or not. Mm. Talking about mental health and depression all the time serves to make it really important. Now, if you're a 16-year-old girl, and you're looking at, at your pop idol talking about mental health and her own mental health struggles and mental health, mental health, mental health I want to be just like her. I yeah. want to be just yeah. like her. What's my anxiety problem? Mm. But okay, I've got yeah, I've got I've got three anxiety problems. I'm going to talk about this as well because I want to be just like her. Because remember, role models are really important, yeah. and what's focal is important. So you've just made mental health the most important thing in the world. And do you know what, kid? If you don't have mental health issues, you're not important. So yeah. better get some. Yeah. And next thing, next thing we get anxiety. Mm. And next thing, oh well, I suffer from anxiety. Mm. Sometimes. You need to do things rather than talk about things. Yeah. Sometimes you need to take action rather than talk about things. Sometimes talking about it all the time makes us stuck in our story. And then I become that story. Mm. And then when somebody says, so what do you do? I, I, I well, I'm, I'm, what do I do? I'm, I'm suffering, I, I, I suffer, yeah. suffer from, yeah. that's kind of my story is that I suffer from depression or anxiety or, mm. or whatever. Well, actually, okay, Grant, I've heard that story a few times now from mm. you, but what are we doing now to, to move on? What else are you? Mm. What else are you? Yeah, yeah. Because you're not just that. Mm. You're not depression. You're not anxiety, because depression or anxiety aren't humans. Mm. 
they're just parts of the spiral of human emotion that we are all at least open to, mm. should be. Mm. So what are you? Because you're not that. And I, I'm worried about the fact that we have created this conversation which makes it more important to have an issue than to do something about it. Yeah. And a lot of it's inspirational. I do think it's okay to talk. I think it's better to take action. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree. I know, I know, I, I know that might seem harsh. I, I, um, I didn't know at the time, and I suffer, I suffer a lot of anxiety with yeah. inside that. But instead, of, a lot of people are saying to me, "Can we go do this, do this, and do that?" Or as your example there as well. And I kind of got sick of it, mm. you know. And um, my dad would say to me, instead of just sitting there moping about it, yeah, you know, go out and do something about it. Yeah. Go, out, go out to these places that make you feel anxious and overcome them. Yeah. That's what he'd say to me. And I, I could go, I could go out shopping. I could go to a uh, shopping centre in Libby Valley. Because yeah. the minute I got there and surrounded by people, boom, it'll hit me. And I decided, I only done it recently, I went out about five, six weeks. And it's a uh, how to deal with your mental health. Mm. You deal know? with it, yeah. And deal. That's, that's going out and doing some of the, as you were saying yourself. Yeah. You get me? I bet you that kicked in when you were a teenager. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have to understand that, that there's the emotions of this and then there's the absolute kind of neurology, the, the brain, how the brain's working. When we're teenagers, we start creating our own identity because up until about the age of 10 or 11, we're still very much attached to our parents' yeah. identity. That's who we are. Oh, that's the young Nocton chap. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That's the O'Reilly yeah. lad. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you are attached to the family. Yeah. And we want to, when we're teenagers, we want to start creating ourselves. We want to start creating who we are. Yeah. Now, we have been creating ourselves all the way up, but we, didn't, we weren't doing it consciously. Next thing, suddenly, we start getting a choice over what clothes we wear. Yeah. Now, that seems to be happening earlier and earlier for yeah. these days, yeah. which I think is insane, by the yeah. way. Like, you know, a seven-year-old going around with branded clothes, you just cut, you're, you're creating a problem as a parent if, if, you've, if you've even let them be aware of brands mm -hmm. at seven. You're yeah. just creating a problem. And, you know, I, all I'd say to parents is toughen up and start saying no to shit. Yeah, yeah. But they want it. Tough shit. Yeah. That's what you need to say back. Yeah. You know what I mean? When they start earning, you have the power. Yeah. So don't be kind of giving excuses to the kind of like, oh, but sure, I can't say no. You absolutely can. You like, can. You have a choice. That's your that. fucking job. Yeah. 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 That's your fucking job. Yeah. So, sorry, I should be cursing. No, you're not. <laughs> but when we get to teenage years, we start creating ourselves and we start, so we get into this new environment. So we could be going to secondary school. And the great thing about secondary school is suddenly we're, we're 12, 13, we're getting into this. And we literally, in some cases, can be a different person because nobody, none of these new people know us. Because mm. we've left some of our old primary school pals behind and we can start being whoever I want to be. Yeah. I, I don't have to be Stephen anymore, I can be Steel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Steel's cooler yeah. than Stephen was. Yeah. Steel isn't an altar boy anymore, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Steel doesn't do that now. Steel is kind of like, yeah, ah, football, no, I'm not into football, no, 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 that's a loser's game, you know yeah. what I mean? If I felt it. I can create whatever persona I want. And the pressure that they start feeling starts shaping our thoughts and our anger. And we really need to be conscious of that. And never have we been influenced by the world so much as now as teenagers. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. Teenagers, we used to have like a corridor as teenagers. And there was 20 doors open to us. And each of those doors have opportunities to interact with different people. Like so, the football, uh, the local youth club, maybe uh, uh, going down to the shopping centre at the weekends, uh, go, you know, put uh, it going down to the park. Mm -hmm. These were certain opportunities to interact. That interaction just—it's—it's it's now a multi-story yeah. car park of doors mm -hmm. because it's all online. You can interact with the world. And so all of these things are coming at us, as you know, when, when teenagers, all of those things are coming at them, and they're trying to create a persona in that environment. Yeah, dangerous. It's tough. Dangerous. Isn't so it? anxiety, you know, people say, why is anxiety increasing among young people? It's because there's more chances to be anxious. Mm. And you know, we need to educate young people that to say that they, they get to choose. Okay, you want to be an adult? Adulthood comes with choices. Mm. Now let's have a conversation about how to make good choices. Because we can't actually help young people in the situation of they're, they're out knacker drinking in a field with their friends, somebody comes out with a load of drugs, 
we can't help them with that. We're not there. Mm. We're not there. What we can help them is we can educate them how to make good choices and how to kind of protect themselves in that without making them feel anxious that every single situation is a threat. Not every situation is a threat. But if you went on social media, you'd swear that every situation yeah. is a threat. Yeah. 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 Like, sorry, the world is actually better than it's ever been. I would never want to have been born at any other time than I was born. Mm. Like, you know, I don't have to go to World War II or World War One. I. I don't have to die of the Black Death. Mm. I don't have to die of the Spanish Flu. I don't, you know, I had really chronic asthma when I was a kid. I would be possibly dead. Yeah. You know, we have possibly better, yeah, yeah, better yeah, medicine, yeah. Better, better everything. Yeah. More, more access to information. Like, I think about some of my cousins, just older cousins who went to college. They had to go to a library, mm. not just to kind of have a bit of peace and quiet, which a lot of college kids do. Yeah. They had to go there to find the information. Yeah. And if the information wasn't in that library and it was in another library, they had to travel to that library to get that information. It's not mad. Yeah, when you think about it, yeah. And like, so say a New York scholar who studies Egyptology mm. is sitting in his office in New York, if he wants to see X scroll or X, he has to travel to Egypt to see it. Now it is, no, not have that. Like no. it's, this is the best time in the world to live. Yeah. Why? What's with all the anxiety? Shouldn't we just train ourselves to handle this better? Mm. You know, and, it, and it's not about handling anxiety better, it's about making choices. Mm. It's simple as that. It's actually just making choices. And making choices that are true to your values. Because if you make choices that are true to your values, there's no anxiety about it. Like, fairness is really important to me, mm. right? Fairness is really important to me. If I do something and I know that it was the fair and right thing to do, fuck everybody else, don't care. Yeah. I actually don't care if I'm all cool for doing it. Mm. It bother me. Yeah. Now, I can say that now, I'm, I'm kind of a middle-aged man, you know, I'm older and all that kind of stuff. But I remember when I was a teenager and I stood up for things, you know, I kind of look back now and go, Jesus, fair Jesus, thank you, mm. you know, I'm glad I did. Mm. You know, I'm glad I did. You know, so I'm, I'm, I think we should be teaching our young people values. And I don't mean giving them values, yeah. I mean finding out what their values are. Helping them find out what are the guiding principles that they want to control their life with. What's really important to them as they're inventing their brains. Because yeah. that's what they're actually doing. That's where the anxiety comes from. When you've got a world full of choice, it's hard to make a decision, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Hard to make a decision. That's, that's it. So, you know, you, you've not been able to, you know, kind of get out of the house and do things. It's because the world of possibility, what could happen? Mm. What could happen? Mm. Whereas if I was to tell you, actually, no, this is what's going to happen. We're going to do this. 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 You'd probably go, okay, I could do that. Mm. But if it's left up to me and I have a world of infinite choices, I find that hard. Mm. So we need to help people make better choices. Yeah. Is that enough of a rant? <laughs> no, it's a podcast. <laughs> Talk as much as you can. Yeah. Um, right, I know we're going straight on to a different topic now from that. Shoot. Very important topic, but you said you're also you're a speaker. Yeah, yeah. Um, you go around to different businesses. And yeah. You, you do a speak. So, rant more uh, on it. We have 10 minutes left. Brilliant. So, yeah. if you could even. No, but if, anybody, if anybody wants to hire me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I do is, I, so I spend uh, half my year actually working with uh, operations, with that, you know, in, in usually back office financial services, helping their team leaders be better team leaders because it has a big impact on. Leadership has a massive impact on our lives. Uh, uh, you know, the, the podcast that I run is called the Good Boss, Bad Boss Podcast because good bosses or bad bosses can make or break us. Mm. I, I know I had about two or three great bosses and I'm still in contact with them all. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's 20 years mm. and I'm still in contact with the good ones. And I still remember the bad ones, but mm. oh, yeah. they impact us greatly. So like, one of the reasons I got into, and I went back to college and I did a master's in leadership and coaching and, and strategy and innovation. I went back because I wanted to see if I could make a difference to that, because I think if you help leaders be better at what they do, it has a knock on effect. Because if you have a boss that has 15 people underneath them, you're not just helping the boss, you're helping 15 yeah. people as well. Yeah. Um, so that, that's why I do it. So half a year I spend doing that. I do one-to-one -one coaching with uh, leaders who want to be better at what they do, mm -hmm. and who want time to think about what they're doing and to really kind of um, stay true to their own values and, and uh, build a career for the, themselves in the way that they want to do that. 
Uh, I, I do other things like um, I, I teach leadership on leadership programs for companies. Um, so I uh, worked with a couple of companies last year and we would have done five months together where we'd do one-to-one -one coaching and then we'd do leadership uh, courses. So we do leadership effectiveness, we do strategy, we do building teams, we do leadership and practice and dealing with change and things like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm really lucky, mm. really lucky to do what I do yeah. because it's actually uh, it's very fulfilling, you feel like you're making an impact, and I always learn something. Mm -hmm. You know, the great thing about it is, I mean, if you go into the world of leadership or the world of work, there are so many books out there, mm -hmm. there's so many things to read. I usually have two books in the go, one on my Kindle, mm -hmm. so I read uh, something on my Kindle, and another on Audible. Mm -hmm. So I, I will always have two books on the go trying to take in information. I don't remember at all, yeah. but I try to synthesize that information and pass it on to people. Mm -hmm. And then there's the podcasts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Podcasts are brilliant. I yeah, mean, there's so many great podcasts out there. I, I think it's a it's a fantastic resource, and and you know it's it's, it's the way the world is going. People are going to take in information with this more and more. So I think it's brilliant. Uh, do you remember Total Recall, the first one? I do. Yeah. Do you remember when the TV screen would go uh, kind of like they would come up with the headline and it'd go, you know, do you want to know more? You know, that's the way it's going to be. The TV screen would, would come up with, there's been a, a bomb in there. Yeah, do you want to go one? Yeah. And they go, yes. And they say, and that's what's going to happen. You're going to go, uh, you're going to go, Spotify, give me a list of uh, top podcasts. And then you go, uh, Joe Rogan talks to Malcolm Gladwell about, uh, you know, uh, original. Uh, mm -hmm. Adam Grant about original. Uh, it'll, it'll say something like, uh, Ollie Mann talks to Helen Zosman about, and do you want to know more? Yes. And next thing you play the podcast. Mm -hmm. All voice activated. Gonna yeah. be, it's going to be a really interesting time for that kind of stuff. So, look, I, I, feel, I just feel privileged to be working in that environment, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a minnow, you know, I, I just, I just you know, do, do small things. There's people doing huge things and huge programs, but I'm very lucky I get to interact with a lot of those people who develop big programs for companies and I, I help deliver them and uh, we, we make an impact. You know, I know we make an impact because, you know, feedback comes back that it has had a great impact on, on people's lives. There will never be a there will never be a time where people don't need support. Every, you know, we're social animals. We've been we've been given a, a, a you know a different challenge. It's not like the industrial revolution where there's a factory and you're the manager and you just have to like is everybody yeah. in? Tick tick yeah. tick. Yeah. Happy days are all the machine runs, tick tick tick. Mm. Uh, okay, did everybody go home? Tick tick tick. Did anybody die? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those days are gone now. Yeah. There's a different challenge. It's about mm. human connection. Mm. It's about building a team that works together. Uh, people have choices. They'll leave. They'll vote with their feet. Yeah. If you're not a good leader, people won't stick with you. Yeah, so, sure. you know, and not everybody can be a leader in that sense, but everybody will be a leader in some situations. Mm. That's what I think is important. So, look, that's what I do. I get a big kick out of this. Mm. And, uh, Look, meeting young people like yourself, yeah, yeah, yeah. finding your like you're finding your way, and you're, and you're trying different things. And I honestly would encourage more people to role model what you do. Yeah, you know, just try it for God's sake. A lot of um, when I started my YouTube, no one around my um, state done it, yeah. so I would get you get slaggings and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. show you in front of a camera. But the more I start from now, the more the younger kids in my area start doing YouTube videos. Really? Yeah. A lot of them, and then they would come up to my house, and I don't live there now. They come up to my house, yeah. knock on the door, and go, "Is Tanto out there?" That's me. Yeah, and it's Tanto. <laughs> and he goes, "Is Tanto out there?" And he goes, "No, no, he doesn't live here." And he's like, "All right, will you give me this?" And he give me like, yeah. stuff, and I was like, "Yeah, it's not my YouTube video." And even getting that feedback as yourself, if you're the leader, it just gives you more energy, man, to go and keep doing what you're doing. Do you get me? People need to realize they are leaders. Yeah. If they do something, mm. you're not a leader if you don't do it. Yeah. In fact, you're role modeling the, 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 the worst behavior, yeah. just do nothing. Do something, mm. get involved. You know, that, that's a brilliant thing. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. That must be a real it's, thing. It's a real thing. Yeah, it does. When you think about it, yeah. So now think of your anxiety and yeah. think of that. Like, yeah. It means nothing, doesn't yeah, it? Nah. Nothing. Nothing at all. What? You know, I mean, that's, that, that, they, this is, I, I, I always say to people, the reason I do what I do is because I have a passionate belief in human potential. Mm. Like look at that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That, you're you're inspiring people yeah. by what you do. Mm. Do you know what I mean? 
hopefully in another four years' time, it won't be a thousand. This will be ten thousand. Ah, oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or a hundred thousand. But the inspiration started now. Yeah. When it was a thousand. Yeah, 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 yeah. You didn't need a hundred thousand to be inspiration. No. Stop looking at success. Yeah. yeah. As a hundred thousand, success is by your door. Mm. Literally, it's time to go there. Yeah, yeah. That's success. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's I think that's, that's a blessing. Yeah. That's a My dad always said to me, "Go, you go out and do it." Yeah, thing. When since he said it to me, what I think it was last week after the podcast, he goes, he goes, remember you're sitting in the hall and you have all your teddies lined up <laughs> and you're the form in front of them and you just talk and talk. And I think he's talking to himself, but he said he looked over and I was doing all these things, making all these faces. Yeah. He goes, "Holy oh, shit, what the fuck am I witnessing here?" That's, but that's just me. That saying that thing again, but. Um, yeah, ever since I was small, I wanted to entertain people and joke, yeah, bring laughter to people. And even if they're having a horrible bloody time, man, just they can come to a comedy show or they can watch a video and they can just for a few minutes, man, or for an hour or two, yeah. just forget about everything. And they, they just come to see that, and, they, and you're the person that's making them feel good yeah. for that few bit of time. It's just it's a rewarding thing, man. It's, it's a good buzz. It's absolutely a yeah. good buzz. Yeah, that's fantastic. Right, well there we go. We're two minutes left, so um, yeah. right. So, would you like to plug anything that you have, please? The Good Boss Bad Boss podcast. Uh, you can find that on iTunes and Spotify. Please do rate and review. That always helps get it out there. Um, it's not because we just want the feedback, but actually it goes up the ranks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you get that, and um, so I mean that that you know if people want to give that a listen, that'd be great. Mm-hmm. Um, I do coaching, uh, you know, for people who are feel stuck in their careers or they want to uh, improve how they're, you know, handling and, and guiding their own career. I do coaching like that, so I'm always always happy to take on one to one clients. I don't do a lot of one to one because I mostly work with businesses. Yeah. Uh, so you know, I'm I'm always. I suppose that the, the, the other thing I'd say is I'm always open to opportunities because I, you know I love interacting and trying new things. So you know, I mean, look. If after this conversation you go, I think I'd like to talk to that guy, yeah, yeah. feel free to get me on LinkedIn, yeah. Stephen. Uh, You're gonna, you can send me all the links yeah. that you have. I will put them down in the description below. You guys go check it out. Even if, man, it's just, it's real interesting to get people on like this. And talk. I'm not just saying that because I've got cameras on, you me, you have to put on a kind of back and stuff. I'm being dead serious. Like It's interesting to get people in that actually have an interest in or a passion in something and they have so much to talk about. And you're just sitting here taking it all in and you're just like, man, I'm not like people are learning as well, but I'm learning from it as well. Yeah, well, look, hope, like, I, 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 you know, all I'd say is, you know, I, all I'm doing is passing on my own passion and interest. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So hopefully that, that, that's, uh, that's what people are getting mm-hmm. this. And, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. So thanks for having me no on. Right. It's, been, it's been great to meet you all yeah. the past yeah. month. No yeah. yeah, same to yourself. Uh, right, guys, so we're going to sign off now because we have 29 seconds left. So remember, guys, um, this video will be out on the Wednesday, every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Uh, just promotion videos as well. You'll see all the links in the description below. Also, at the start of the video, you will see everything as well. And then I'll put the things like that. So, guys, remember. On episode 31 is next week, Wednesday at 6 p.m. We don't know who we're gonna have on, but we'll have some. Hello, how's it going? Yeah, so I just wanna say, guys, that Stephen is gone now, and I didn't really check the camera, and it turned off as well, so I do apologize for that. But all I wanna say is, remember, episode um, 31 will be on next week, and remember, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an early podcast. Guys, thanks for watching. See you next Wednesday.